Every legend reaches its end, but not all finales are created equal. Some legends rode off into the sunset with their heads held high in triumph, while others left the game with just a whimper, wondering if they should have called it quits sooner. Today, we're looking at the greatest basketball artists of NBA history as we analyze their farewell performances and see if any closed out their careers with a masterpiece. Speaking of appreciating great artists, today's video is brought to you by Masterworks. Masterworks was founded by tech entrepreneurs who have founded billion dollar companies. It's the only alternative investing platform that lets you invest in multi-million dollar iconic artwork from artists like Banksy, Picasso, and Basquiat. And considering the increasing inflation rate, there's never been a better time than now to invest, which is why I do it. Masterworks knows what they're doing when it comes to selling art. In fact, they returned 32% to their investors in 2020 and 31% in 2021. Getting started with Masterworks is super easy. It takes just a few clicks. You visit their website, create an account, browse their artwork, and you can diversify your portfolio with one of the most stable assets around. If you don't want to wait until they find a buyer, Masterworks also offers a secondary market on their website where you can sell your shares to another member, similar to how you would sell stock on an app like Robinhood. To check out Masterworks for yourself, click on the link in the pinned comment or in the video's description and start investing today. According to my personal NBA GOAT series, there are a total of 9 GOAT candidates. Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Tim Duncan, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, and LeBron James. Since LeBron has not yet played his last game, he will not be present in this video. Let's start with the one who most recently retired, Tim Duncan. His final game was on May 12, 2016 in Game 6 of the Western Conference Semifinals against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Famously, Duncan aged gracefully throughout his NBA career, so closing it out with a solid performance didn't come as a surprise. We knew there was a chance that Duncan could retire at the end of that season, but I honestly thought he would be sticking around, as he didn't get the appreciative send-off like Kobe did. With that being said, there are worse ways to go out, as Duncan put up a solid 19 points, 5 rebounds, and 1 block on 50% shooting from the field. Not only was San Antonio one of the oldest teams in the league, but Duncan himself had just recently turned 40 years old, and the much younger Oklahoma City Thunder took full advantage, as they closed out the series in commanding fashion with a final score of 113-99. Next, we'll take a look at the Celtics legend, Larry Bird. Bird's farewell performance came on May 17, 1992, in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Semifinals against the Cleveland Cavaliers. At this point, Bird's athletic body was deteriorating fast, as he was now 35 years old and had been dealing with severe back problems for roughly half a decade. Not only that, but Magic Johnson's HIV announcement and absence from the league took a major toll on Bird's sense of motivation which resulted in Larry deciding to hang it up when he still believed he had some game left in the tank. Due to his chronic back issues, Larry missed roughly four of the games that series, but he did play in the deciding seventh game. Larry had a modest contribution, but an efficient one, as he dropped 12 points, five rebounds, and four assists on six of nine shooting from the field. It wasn't nearly enough as the talented Cavs closed out the series with a blowout, as the final score was 122 to 104. To follow up Larry Legend, of course, we've got to take a look at his rival, Magic Johnson. His final game came on May 2nd, 1996, in Game 4 of the first round against the Houston Rockets. Although Magic retired after the 1991 Finals when he had his HIV announcement, he did actually return for a portion of the 95-96 season. His fourth-seeded Lakers were up against the fifth-seeded and two-time defending champion Rockets. Magic actually played quite well in his first three games of that series, but unfortunately, the fourth game was his worst, as he finished with just eight points, five rebounds, and five assists on two of eight shooting from the field. He also had four turnovers in his 30 minutes of playing time. Ultimately, Hakeem Olajuwon and the Rockets were just too much, as they eliminated Magic's Lakers with a final score of 102-94. to 
Next, we'll take a look at the captain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. His last game was on June 13, 1989, in Game 4 of the NBA Finals against the Detroit Pistons. This wasn't just a rough game, but a rough series for both Kareem and his Lakers. If they had won this series, it would have given him 7 rings as he rode off into the sunset. But instead, the superior Detroit Pistons swept the Lakers as Los Angeles was dealing with a multitude of injuries, including a hamstring injury to their best player, Magic Johnson. Kareem was known for aging gracefully throughout his career, but on this night, the 42-year-old center just didn't have it, as he was contained to only 7 points, 3 rebounds, and 3 assists on 2 of 8 shooting from the field. It wasn't as close as the final score indicated, as the Pistons won the championship 105-97. We've looked at enough duds of finales, so let's get into the great performances, starting with Will Chamberlain. His last game was on May 10, 1973, in Game 5 of the NBA Finals against the New York Knicks. Wilt's Lakers were competing for championships up to the very end, and despite being nearly 37 years old and playing on a bad knee during the final game of a long season, Wilt still managed to play all 48 minutes. On the night, he put up 23 points, 21 rebounds, 3 assists, 3 steals, and 2 blocks on 56.3% shooting from the field. He was giving a strong effort and was impactful on both ends of the court throughout, but regardless, his Lakers still came up short. Given how many times Wilt destroyed the Knicks throughout his career, it did seem a bit like poetic justice that they got the last laugh, as they won the championship with a final score of 102-93. How about his rival, Bill Russell? Russell's final game was on May 5, 1969, in Game 7 of the NBA Finals against the Los Angeles Lakers. Bill ended his career the same way he played it, winning Game 7s with a clutch effort. He played all 48 minutes and led his team in both assists and rebounds, as he put up 6 points, 21 rebounds, and 6 assists on 2 of 7 shooting from the field. It was a classic battle with the entire 4th quarter available on YouTube. Unfortunately, since it's only the 4th quarter, I can't count how many total steals and blocks he achieved. But even from just the 4th quarter alone, you can see his dominant impact and influence defensively. It's important to remember that not only was Russell leading his team on the court, but he was also the acting head coach, making him the only player coach to lead his team to a championship. If that's not a legendary way to go out, then I don't know what is. Next, we'll take a look at Michael Jordan. Michael's final game was on April 16, 2003, in a road matchup against the Philadelphia 76ers. Obviously, Jordan already had the perfect storybook ending, but that itch to play again was just a little too strong. Instead, his final game was in the regular season, and it was far from his best performance, as he pitched in 15 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists on 40% shooting from the field. It was mostly mid-range baskets from MJ, but he did manage to get one last finish at the rim. The game was a blowout in favor of Allen Iverson and the Sixers, to such a point that it was basically over by the third quarter. Due to this, Jordan only played 28 minutes in the game, and the crowd was chanting his name as he was on the bench, since they wanted to see him play more. The final score was 107-87 and a bittersweet ending for his airness. Lastly, we'll take a look at what's becoming the most famous farewell, Kobe Bryant's. This game was on April 13, 2016 against the Utah Jazz. The Lakers were 16-65 and 65 at the time they were entering this matchup, but you wouldn't know it considering how hyped Staples Center was on this evening. In his 20th season, Kobe was having a terrible year from an efficiency standpoint, as he was shooting a league-worst 35% from the field. But a motivated Kobe would exceed expectations for the occasion. Now this game is pretty highly debated concerning how impressive his performance actually was. After all, the Mamba did have to take 50 shots to score his 60 points, although he did make 44% of those shots. For me, the most impressive part of that night was his finish, as he made his final 5 difficult shots and led his Lakers back from a double digit deficit when there was only 3 minutes remaining. If Kobe misses any one of those clutch shots down the stretch, he probably loses his final game. With that being said, not every moment was totally legitimate competition. My favorite part was when Kobe completely and blatantly shoved Gordon Hayward away, 
so he could get some space to get the ball for his final free throws. Kobe Smart, he knew that no matter how badly he shoved Hayward, there's no way the refs are blowing that whistle in that situation. He famously finished his night with 60 points, but he also added in 4 rebounds, 4 assists, 1 steal, and 1 block on 44% shooting, and his Lakers won the game with a final score of 101-96. to After making this video, I think it's pretty clear just how special and rare a farewell like this actually is. So now it's your turn. Of all the games listed on the screen, which one of these farewell performances do you think was the most impressive? And explain why it's Kobe. I look forward to reading your comments. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.